everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Natalie and my channel is all about luxury, vintage, fashion, and styling. So if you're interested in any of those, please consider hitting the subscribe button below. And today I'm going to be reviewing the Row Sophia 8.75 crossbody bag. I'm showing this bag over on my Instagram, which if you're not following me there already, you definitely should. I will pop it on the screen for you guys, but I asked if you would be interested in seeing a review of this bag and overwhelmingly you guys said yes. You wanted to know if it was worth it for the price and what fits in it, all the good stuff. So I am going to be sharing here. So this is the bag if you haven't seen it. So it's the row and this bag was introduced, I believe last year in 2022. So it's been around for about a year. It comes in a clutch version. It comes in a top handle version. And then this is the crossbody version. And there's actually the 8.75, which is the smaller of the crossbody. And then there's one size larger, the 10. And so that refers to the dimensions. I will pop the dimensions of this on the screen here. It's easier than trying to like spit out numbers. So this is the bag here. It's a very classic box kind of shape style, a very structured bag. As you can see, it is in a very smooth calf leather. And then here's the strap, which is adjustable, which is always nice to have an adjustable strap. And then here's the closure. It opens this way. You just pull that down and then this just pops up. Very easy to do. You could do it with one hand without a problem. And then here is the inside. First of all, you can see it says the row here, very minimal printed like it is on all of their other bags. And the inside on this one is that burgundy color, very reminiscent of like vintage Chanel bags, but that burgundy, it's one interior and then the two slip pockets on either side. So you can keep cards or whatever in there if you wanted. I feel like I never use those type of pockets personally. But that is the bag. It'll fit all of your essentials. Okay, so let's see what fits. I'm gonna start first with my Louis Vuitton pochette. This is what I use for my wallet. It's kind of like my wallet slash catch-all. And then sometimes, obviously, I have some smaller bags, so I have to downsize and just kind of bring my essentials. But let's just see how this fits. Okay, so see, this basically takes the whole space up. I could probably fit that and I'm filming on my phone, but I'll just show you like a case here. I just have a regular, not a pro and that fits fine. But really besides that, I could probably fit a lipstick and my AirPods. Oh, that's a squeeze. And then if the key was like very minimal, you could do that. And then you could see that fits. And then as far as closing, you know, you can't overstuff a like stiff bag like this. So that would be like the max. But obviously if you wanted to like downsize that or you just have a little card case, you could definitely fit more in there. Like sunglasses in a soft case. I could probably actually fit that on top if they're a small pair of sunglasses. And then that fits. So, I mean, it carries all the essentials. You just have to play Jenga a little bit with it, but it does fit everything in this size bag. And personally, I probably wouldn't get the larger size crossbody because I feel like larger crossbodies just like look kind of funny. I'm pretty petite. I'm 5'3". So this would probably be the biggest crossbody size I would personally go for. But if you're taller, you could probably get away with the larger one or the top handle. But yeah, I mean, it's a good size bag. I'd say personally for me, this is more of an evening style bag. You can definitely get away with it wearing it during the day or if it's like corporate or something, but it's a more dressier style. And usually the number one question I get with a bag like this is, will it scratch? And yes, this bag will show scratches very easily. So if that's something that bothers you, I would not get this version. I think there might be a pebbled version. I don't know if it's out already yet or not. If it is, I will link this bag also, you guys, by the way, down in the description box, anything I can find, all the versions will be down there if you wanna check them out. But yeah, as far as the smooth leather, it will scratch easily. So let me compare it to just like a couple of my bags that I have just to kind of compare different like leathers and sizes for you. So this is my vintage Hermes Kelly. This is a box leather, so you can see they are 
pretty much identical leathers. This has that shine though, which really you can only get on vintage bags. Over time, these type of bags, I mean, it's like a beautiful vintage style leather. So it will show scratches, but over time, they kind of like melt into the leather. And you can see like, even though this bag, I mean, this bag's from the late seventies, it's a super old vintage. You can see it's in really good condition still. And, and the scratches almost just like meld in on vintage bags. So it's something that over time, I mean, it just gives character to the bag, honestly. But again, like I said, if you're someone who babies your bag, you would probably never reach for this bag because you'd be concerned that it would get scratched or messed up. So just something to keep in mind, the row quality bags are beautiful. I have never had a problem with mine. I have two other, the row bags. I have this, which is my half moon bag, which I have a review on this as well. I will put it down in the description box. I also have a review on my, the row park tote in the medium size and the small size actually down in the description. I'll put all of those there for you guys, but this is my, the row half moon bag. And you can see this one is also a smooth leather too, but I do feel like this calf leather is not quite as easy to scratch as this one. I mean, it still will, but I don't feel like this one is as delicate. So it's a little bit of a softer leather. This one's definitely a more of a structured bag. And I absolutely love this bag. And honestly, just like a quick insert here, if I had to pick between the two bags, I would pick the Half Moon bag. I love it. I think for the price, it is a great bag, beautiful quality. Now the price of this one is $33.90, if I'm not mistaken. I will pop it up on the screen. And I mean, it's a pricey bag. Most of these box style bags are pricey because of the construction, how they're made. And this one, like all of the row bags, are beautiful quality. I always think that the row bags are really great. They're only gonna go up in price over time. And on the resale market, they still usually resell for a really high price. So it's something that I feel like is a decent investment. Like if it's something you down the line would feel like you'd want to you know, sell, you could probably do it without a problem. And one other thing I wanna point out about this bag, and this is like on all of these types of structured bags, when you open and close it a lot, you end up getting creases kind of here along the curve. So again, something that if you're like a perfectionist about your bags, this might eventually bother you. I have a vintage Celine box bag here just to kind of compare the sizes. Now, my one problem with this vintage bag, and it's not on the new one, so it's not really that relevant, but I'll show you here just because we are here. This has that split compartments in it. I find that so annoying. I, it really doesn't hold a lot when the compartments are split like that. I do like that this is one compartment. Now, I'm not 100% sure, I need to double check, but I feel like from what I've seen, the bigger size bag with a handle on it has multi compartments inside. Personally, I can't stand when there's the multi compartments. I feel like not a lot fits, and so I wouldn't go for that version. Here's a comparison to my vintage Chanel mini square flap again size wise just so you guys can see i just want to kind of compare everything so you can see the size comparison here this one's definitely a little bit bigger here's the comparison of the row sophia bag and then here's my the row park tote in the medium size just so you kind of get an idea and then this strap is on the shortest setting right here now, overall, my impressions of this bag, do I think it's a beautiful bag? I do, I think it's beautiful. Now, is it like something that you feel like is worth it? So that's the question I usually get asked the most about bags. Is it worth investing in this one versus another bag? And honestly, I would say of the row bags, my favorites are probably maybe the park tote number one. I love my park tote. I just think that slouchy but lightweight tote. I use that bag almost every day. I absolutely love it. And I just think it's so beautiful with that slouch to it. So that one, I love my half moon bag. I use and wear this one all the time. And I mean, price wise, this is a fraction of this one. So if it's a style you're like going in between which one, I would say personally go for either the half moon or the tote over this one. That's just my personal opinion. And 
I obviously have other like evening structured type bags. So for me, it's not a must in my collection. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned this. This is a loan. So this is not my bag to keep and it's not a bag I'm personally considering adding to my collection. I just don't feel like I need it in my life, you know? Personally, if I was going for a very specific bag like this, if it wasn't my like vintage one, I kind of have something similar, I would probably buy a pre-loved Celine box bag just because the prices on those you can actually get for really good deals right now. I don't know if maybe once Phoebe's new collection comes out, if the stock and the prices on those bags ends up going up from all like the Phoebe Philo era, Celine. So maybe it's something to look into getting soon. If I find some amazing ones, I will definitely link them down in the description box too for you guys. But if you're just wanting like a classic style like that, there's definitely others on the market. I don't feel like this is like that special that it'd be worth um, over either buying a um, pre-loved Celine version or, I mean, there's other brands that have very similar bags for a lower price point. Again, I link some that I can find down in the description box for you guys, but I don't know. It's not like a must have for me personally but I do think it's a beautiful bag. So if you really feel like it's something you've been looking at or wanting, I mean, I don't have anything negative to say about it as far as the quality. I think that it's a timeless bag. I don't think that this is gonna date, even though it is pretty popular at the moment and getting more popular. I just think that because it's very minimal, it's really like a classic style that's been around for ages and just always being redone. So, you know. I think that, you know, if you're looking for a structured lady bag, it's a beautiful option. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope you found it helpful. If there's any other questions I didn't answer for you guys, you can definitely leave it down in the comments. I will be sure to respond and please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, take care. Bye.